Something is going on. Before I even touch this, I'm going to show you all. Check this out. So look at that. What is that ring right there? Was that just a... Oh, no, that is broken. Look at that. Never knew that. That thing has been on there for a long time. That's interesting. I don't like that. Um, but it might be repairable. But anyway, huh, that's, that's not fun. So that... Uh, now, and I wanted to show y'all the uh, the labels on this thing are like puffy stickers. <laughs> RD Logics RD12. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, tear this thing down and give it a, a thorough cleaning. And then we'll come back and we'll take a look at the RD Logics R12 engine. Uh, but let me go ahead and cut this here. All right, we are back with a freshly cleaned RD Logix R3 nitro engine. Uh, I tell you what, I did have to do some fighting with this sleeve. Uh, this sleeve was stuck pretty good. Um, I have good tools for a 21 sleeve removal, uh, but on a 12, you know, I, I, I'm certainly a big block uh, specialist myself. Uh, so, I basically had to throw all my little tricks at this thing to get it out, but I did eventually get it out, and uh, we have everything cleaned up. Now, let me start off by saying, before we start looking at this stuff, I had, I had an idea that this was going to be a bad little mofo, okay? Usually, the R... Uh, is usually a pretty good clue. When you have a high-end engine already, okay, it's an over based engine, uh, and you see that R letter, usually that means it's race modified, not always. But uh, on this one, it's certainly, that's exactly what it means. This thing is highly modified. Uh, and let's go ahead and get into, uh, so we saw when we removed it from the vehicle, that we have a broken exhaust port on this thing. And so, as soon as I got it apart and cleaned up, I could see why we have a broken exhaust on this thing, because it is modified. If you look in there, the entire inside is opened up so they wanted to open up a little bit more air let me go ahead and say that now so i used to I, I still do i think of these small nitro engines essentially okay as little air pumps because that's exactly what they are they suck air in through the carburetor and push air out through the exhaust and the more air they can move the faster they can go, okay? So, uh, any opening up to make uh, ports bigger, that's to move more air, okay? So, this back end was shaved all around on the inside to thin it out, not to thin it out, to open it up, and that resulted in thinning it out. Uh, and it looks like this was actually even glued, uh, I think I see some glue residue on this thing um, where someone had tried to repair it before with glue, not the way to do it. Uh, if I try to repair this, I may, I may attempt a repair on that with some JB Weld. Um, if I do, we'll talk about it uh, in a video. So... Uh, first modification, they opened up the exhaust port to get more air out that way. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this crankcase. Uh, it has standard steel bearings. Um, like I said, it's got the super cool puffy sticker looking uh, logos on it. RD on one side, 12 on the other. And I had kind of thought when I was throwing this in the ultrasonic bath, I'm like, Oh man, there's uh, some gunk 
stuck in that little crevice there, but no, that's not gunk. That is glue. That is the glue holding that uh, little puffy sticker thing to the crankcase. So you can see the glue seeping out around it there. Um, looks good inside. Uh, no, see if I can get you in there. Look at the, the very nice cuts inside. Um, it's very well shaped in there. I, I know it's kind of hard to see on this one. Do I have all my lights on? Um, some really thin fins right here. And you can see that one of them has snapped off. Um, those are some really, I bet I could snap one off with my fingernail. Um, but your classic Novorossi shape, uh, we all recognize this shape from your older Novorossi 12s. Uh, this engine, I would say, uh, is probably mid-90s, somewhere around there, which is 30 years ago. I was just thinking about that with a buddy yesterday, how uh, we were talking about 1996, and then like, man, that was 30 years ago. All right, so that's the crankcase. We got we saw our busted piece there. Okay, let's go ahead and look at that uh, cooling head. So again, RD Logics at the bottom, R3 at the top. Your classic Novorossi shape and color. Okay, for your uh, twelve small block, twelve size engines. Um, beautiful shine cuts as you would expect and uh, your classic Novorossi shape. Uh, it is a two-piece with a separate head button, of course. Uh, speaking of head button, let's go ahead and knock that out of the way. Uh, it is a very, uh, this is what always sh sh took me as odd on these, right? So super thick piece, right? See the super thick chunk of aluminum there, but it only goes down into the engine, like two, three millimeters. You see how, let me go ahead and remove this shim, which, uh, it only has one shim, and most of these 12s, um, if I remember correctly, usually only had one shim. Come on. There we go. Uh, and that is a 0.3 aluminum shim. But yeah, look how... Look how little of the head button goes down into the combustion chamber. Uh, very short head on it. It is a turbo head, and it looks like, what do we got in here? Is this a G5 or C5? C, C5 Novorossi. You can always tell your Novorossi glow plugs from those dots on the top looking down at the glow plug from the top you see those dot that dot pattern that's how you can always tell your Novorossi glow plugs uh it is turbo it's a turbo head button of course this is a race grade engine let's go ahead and look at this carburetor and yes i did lose it, ha it had a little rd logics logo on this as well uh, i'm surprised those didn't fall out uh usually those type of logos will fall out in the ultrasonic bath and I'll have to glue them back on. Uh, I will be putting that back on there. So don't sweat that. This is a three needle carb. I uh, got our low end right there. Top end up top. And our third mid needle on the side. Um, to me it doesn't look like it opens very much. But again you got to remember this is a 12 size engine so this isn't going to look as big as your 21 looks like maybe six six millimeter or so is my guesstimate um composite carb not an all metal carb as a lot of your older Novorossi 12s did have all metal carbs uh, this is a composite and metal carb um and the that was the uh, O-ring that uh, was connecting at the bottom of it going on to the motor. Yeah, this thing has been on this car for a very long time. Um, this, this engine hasn't been removed for many years. All right, so that's our three-needle Novorossi half composite, three-quarter composite with a little bit of aluminum on that side. Um, carburetor. 
Uh, our back plate is your classic, uh, very simple Novorol C12 back plate. Um, very thin, got a uh, O-ring laying up against the back. Uh, simple design inside, no up, no Italy, no nothing, just plain, very thin, very light, uh, your standard classic Novorossi 12 backplate. All right, now let's start looking at the good stuff, okay? Like I said, this here was a modified high-end race engine, okay? So let's start to look at those features. Uh, number one, we have a very, very nice knife edge on that conrod there. And yes, that thing is very dark. Um, my uh, ultrasonic bath will turn metals dark, but this was already like this. Uh, I pulled this apart. This thing was already really dark. Um, as you can see that, you know, those are both aluminum. One's dark as heck and one's bright as heck. I think it has to do with the porosity. But anyways, uh, beautiful knife edge. Very Oh, just cut myself. Um, very nice knife edge. Not a whole lot of meat, but again, we're looking at a 12. 12s look a lot smaller to me than uh, 21s. Got a nice deep, I can get my nail caught in it easily. Nice deep oil groove right there on the piston. Uh, it's not domed. Kind of looks like crap, but... Uh, yeah, it just kind of does. Uh, but that is our piston and rod. You know what? Real quick, just let me see. And yeah, still got compression. All right. Um, where should I? So what do we? We looked at the piston and rod. We looked at everything else. We basically have the sleeve and the crank left. And that's where the most work is going to be done on a modified engine, okay, is on the sleeve and the crank. So, number one, let's start down here. And we got, it's a basic setup, but it's a very nice setup. We have a huge fang coming down, all right, huge fang coming out of the window there. And we got a nice shark fin on our leading edge right there. Uh, got our little cut off behind um, the crank pin back there, but all right. So that's a good looking. That's a good looking. That looks kind of like a uh, if that had some weights in it, that would look like an OS speed crank. Um, very good looking crank from that end. But this is what got me, and this goes back to the whole air pump thing. Look at the freaking induction window on this thing. Boom. Half of that freaking crank is gone. Look at that induction window. That thing is huge. It is shaped. You know what? Do I have my... Yeah, I got my light. Oh, no. I'm out of juice. Hold on. I got some juice. You got to check this out. This is a very nice... Let me get rid of that battery. Grab a battery off my battery rack. Throw it right in here. All right. Look at the cuts on the leading edge of that induction window. Let me get you a good view. See how that is cut? Uh, nice, sharp. That is really, sh I might actually be able to cut myself on that. That is a very sharp edge of that induction window. It's cut very, very nicely in there, as you can see. And that induction window is absolutely huge. Uh, that's just a monster induction window. This thing can pump some air. That's what this thing was made to do. Uh, to spin fast and move some air. All right. We looked at our crank. Very nice. So last but certainly not least is our sleeve. And we can guess from the R3, okay, that this is probably a three-port engine. And we guessed correctly. Uh, let's start on the back with the exhaust. And uh, nothing super special on the exhaust. 
Uh, it's very well shaped, uh, good size. It's not small at all. Let's go ahead and sneak around to the front where we see not only do we have a cutout down here, but that is a very, very ramped induction window in the front. That ramp comes all the way down. Come on now, zoom. Comes all the way down to there, that uh, ramp does. So we have a, a nice, beautiful cut on the bottom there. And we also have that very, very nice induction window with the huge ramp on it. Now, so you just heard me there uh, call the intake port on the sleeve another induction window, right? I was just talking about the crank and the induction window on the crank. Apparently, I had induction window on the brain. Uh, here in a second, I'm about to call the Schnurly port an induction port. Uh, you, you, if you watch my videos, you know that I mix nut, bolt, screw up all the time. Uh, I'll be talking about one thing and call it something else. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm, I'm not an old, old man yet, but I'm getting there. Um, enjoy the rest of the video. All right. So I'm watching the video back, uh, for a final, uh, finally putting a video together so I can upload it and get ready. Right. Uh, induction window, intake port. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. I was listening to it back. I'm like, well, no. Okay. First of all, no. That is not the induction window. That is the intake port. It is also called the boost port. Okay. That is the proper name for that. But let's think about it for a second. Okay. Intake. It is an intake port. Intake induction. That is the exact same thing. Intake, port, induction, port, a port and a window. How much different are those words? Uh, it, it, that's a port. You could call that a window, right? So I'm not going to be so hard on myself. That is essentially an induction window. The air comes in to that opening, <laughs> But that's a boost port, uh, a.k.a. intake port. In the sleeve, they're called ports. I um, thought I would just say that. And also, you know, I was also watching the video back. And let me talk about this for a second, okay? Yes, my hands are really dry. I've always got little cuts and stuff. I have man hands. I'm sorry, but I don't lotion them up. I'm always working on stuff. I'm always touching chemicals and I treat my hands harshly and they look like it. But that's my hands. My bad. It's just the way they are. Sometimes when I get up in there and I'm showing stuff, I'm like, man, my hands look like crap. But oh well. I'll see y'all later. Now... Let's come to our Schnurly ports. And here's where we see something pretty interesting. Uh, we've got two fangs on our induction port. Now, usually, and maybe this is a 12 versus 21 thing that I'm not familiar with. But usually, if you have some fangs coming down off of your Schnurly port, it's usually right on the back, the back edge of the port. Okay, back here, uh, right along the exhaust, okay? But this one, it's got a teeny, looks like a teeny little thing in the corner. But the fang is moved up a little from the, the back end of it. And you also have a little fang in the front. And it's like the front one is kind of a rounded fang and the rear one's kind of a squared off fang. Do you see that? It lets you get a real good view of that Schnurly port situation. It's pretty interesting, looks pretty good. Let me get you around to the other side and as you can see on a very high quality engine, it is exactly the same. We're getting good zoomage in there. 
Uh, very, very good looking sleeve there on the RD Logix R3 Nitro engine. A very good looking engine in general. Some very high quality parts. It's an Overossi engine, of course. Uh, you can tell that it was made uh, to go very fast, and I am positive that it certainly did. Uh, I mean, someone had put it into a... This in its day was about as high end of a 10th uh, scale nitro touring car as you can get, the Mugen MTX3. Uh, so, of course, you had to have a great engine if you were a race. I'm sure that was probably raced uh, in its day. <clears throat> All right, so we took a look at this thing. Uh, I'm going to throw it. Now, the, the crappy thing about this is I wish this engine was brand new or very, very nice, uh, but this engine is old and it's kind of beat. Uh, like I said, it does still have. Uh, it's. Uh, yeah, not a whole lot of compression left on it. It would need a pinch. Uh, this engine is old and tired, um, but, you know, I think I'm probably, cause, because this, this is a BA mofo, right? Uh, I think I'm going to try to to get her going again. Uh, I think I might try to JB weld that exhaust piece, uh, give her a pinch. Uh, let me see how our Conrad is. Not bad. It'll still run great. Uh, it's got just a touch of wiggle, um, but it's not sloppy yet. So I think it'll run, um, but very interesting, very nice, high-end engine. Uh, that I'm sure we've never looked at before. I'm sure you've never looked at the RD Logix R3 engine before. Uh, I guarantee this is a super rare engine. Actually, you know what? I've never even tried to Google it. Let me see if I could find some information about this. We'll talk to y'all later. Have a great day.